Since I was a child, I've been having the same nightmare. I dream of lying on my side, in a bed, looking at a tapestry of flowers. Then, a stranger reaches into my room. He pulls aside my covers and pushes a blade to my throat. I look up at him and see a large pair of blue eyes. He smiles as he pushes a knife into my throat. I release you, he whispers in a comforting tone. The same dream, every single night. I knew of that dream before I even knew what a knife was. I would wake up screaming, clutching my throat, crying at the top of my lungs. I started having that dream before I could even walk. It is one of my earliest memories. I went to therapy for years. I would be scared of flower tapestries, of sleeping with my door closed, of sleeping with the lights off, all manner of things that reminded me of the room from my nightmare. I was put on anxiety medication when I was five years old, antidepressants just one year later. I was deeply paranoid and had to go through therapy, as well as regular checkups. I had high blood pressure from the age of 10 and various stress-related issues, including violent outbursts and insomnia. I couldn't go to a normal school. As you can imagine, it was an enormous strain on my family. Sometimes, to keep me from jumping out of bed, screaming. I was given sleeping pills, making my sleep completely dreamless. It tired me out to the point where I'd go about my days completely dazed. It made me sleep 14 hours a day, but at least I could function as a human being most afternoons. When I was 13, I was invited as a flower girl to an aunt's wedding. I was flown out to their place in St. Gall, Missouri, where I stayed the night. There was a large party the night before the reception, and I had to turn in early. The entire guest house was completely dark, but after three years of heavy medication, I wasn't as anxious about darkness as I used to be. That's why I didn't notice the flower tapestry. That night, one of my aunt's guests stepped out of the party. He was wildly drunk and had seen me earlier that night. He owned the building where I slept and decided to pay me a visit. He had a knife and large blue eyes. As he opened the door to my room, I turned around and saw him, just like in my nightmare. But this time, it ended differently. I could act. I wasn't locked to the actions of my dream self anymore. I had been prepared for years, so when my attacker entered the room, I burst into action. I threw my bag at him and crawled out of the window, which I'd left open. He followed me, screaming the same thing as in my dream. I will release you, he screamed. I hurried down to the creek behind the house and waded out to my knees. He followed me. He left his shoes by the entrance so I wouldn't hear his footsteps. As he waded out, he suddenly crouched, screaming. It was so dark out that I couldn't see anything but black water, but I knew he'd stepped on something sharp. He fell forward, reaching towards me. I pounced and grabbed his knife. Long story short, I made sure he would be no threat to me or anyone else ever again. The police stepped in. I was interrogated and released within 12 hours. I was ecstatic. My nightmare, after all this time, would finally be over. I slept without sleeping pills and didn't have any problems. I was fully rested and relaxed for the first time in my life. Euphoria. In the aftermath, my life slowly got back to what can be considered a normal schedule. Sure, I still had trauma from the assault, but without the stress of the mangled sleep cycle, I could adapt over time. I started doing better in school, and even made a few friends. As the months passed, I started to have ordinary dreams. Pleasant ones, even. I would look forward to sleeping, wondering what magic I might see when I close my eyes this time. But something has been bugging me for years now. It started as a nagging thought. This man... This attacker was foreseen. I knew he was coming. But what if there was a second one later in my life? A third? A fourth? I will die someday, and without knowing how it is going to happen, I'm at a loss. I found myself scared of doing the most basic tasks, like crossing the street or cutting vegetables. Death could be anywhere. Back to therapy. Again. For years, I couldn't stop thinking about what was going to happen, 
when I started noticing things around me that no one else seemed to see. I would see large blue eyes staring at me from across a busy street. I'd hear someone sharpening a knife in the back of a movie theater. I'd hear those words in any movie, in any TV show, in any conversation. I release you. Those words would hurt me, like a cigarette burn in my ears. I would explain it to my therapist as a feeling of being knife-bound, like I was supposed to be killed that night, but something got in the way. I was meant to be stabbed to death. I can't shake the feeling, to this day, that this is my fate. Is there another attacker in my future that I need to prepare for? When? Where? I started to isolate myself. It was easier not to worry about people when there simply were no people around to make me worry. My parents had a vacation house out by the lake that we fixed up for my 19th birthday. They got me a car and helped me with my weekly grocery shopping. I've lived on disability for almost my entire adult life and if it hadn't been for my parents, I don't know what I'd do. I've lived like this for several years, but recently things have started to change for the worse. It started when my dad died. He was a small town dentist, so pretty much everyone knew about him. His passing was big and sudden news, and I'm still not clear how it happened. My brother, Jacob, who is also a dentist, took it especially hard. A lot of people from both sides of the family had completely forgot that I existed. At the funeral, I was approached by half a dozen people, at least, who just asked me about my relationship to the deceased. It was embarrassing, but I was too distraught to make a scene. Still, there were plenty of people there that I'd never seen, but I couldn't be bothered to ask them who they were. My therapist had talked to me about making thresholds for my paranoia, and that there are limits I must keep myself to. It is one thing to politely ask them on their name, another thing entirely to catalogue the entire wake and combing through the guest list for suspicious motives. Still, I saw several suspicious faces in attendance, large blue eyes flashing by in the distance. Familiar whispers, tinges of metal against the church pews, ordinary people leading ordinary lives, suddenly turning towards me, their eyes changing colour and size. They stare, and I know what they want. Something inside them stares, trying to push them towards me, blade first. Now when I'm at home, I don't feel safe. In the morning, there are footprints in the mud outside. I can hear someone tugging at the doorknob at night. I see blue eyes passing by the window. There are knives missing from my kitchen. And I wake up to whispers in my ear. I release you. Last week, I went into town to get my own groceries. There were eight other people at the supermarket, but they all stopped as soon as I entered. All of them just stood there, staring at me. Everyone with the same big blue eyes. They were smiling at me, like he had smiled. Harmless, royalty-free shopping music blared through the aisles. I release you, the cashier said with a smile. I release you, repeated the old woman by the dairy shelves. I left in a hurry and haven't been back since. I see those same eyes in every passing car, walking down every street, and I sense a knife's edge in every conversation I overhear. At night... I know they're just outside my window, waiting to see through the curtains. It can't just be paranoia at this point. It has to be my fate. I am knife-bound. They're coming to release me from this constant worry.